What is up, YouTube? You tube! Mr. King coming at you live from the 09. So today, what we've got, here are the bell questions. Please pause the video now. Okay, and when you're ready, please go to classwork. And then go to Thursday, carrying capacity. And we're going to be taking notes today. I know we've been taking a lot of notes, but it's just something you got to do in biology. So first things first. We're going to be going back on the Cornell notes and answering, was Thanos right? Left side, teacher side, right side, student side. So first thing, try and remember from yesterday, limiting factor. So that's a biotic or abiotic environmental factor that restricts the growth of population. Pretty much anything, living or non-living, that will kill and slow down a population's growth. So try and think of some examples of limiting factors. Here is what my fourth period came up with. It was pretty much an exhaustive list. Nuclear war, meteor crash, natural disaster, no trees, lack of food, no bees, starvation, viruses, disease. These are all things that are limiting factors because they stop the human or any animal or plant population from going too overpopulated. And then, so the next question is, why are limiting factors good? Why are they important? So limiting factors are important because overpopulation can la lead to lack of biodiversity. Biodiversity is like diversity of different animals or plants in the same area. For example, like too many rabbits is bad. They'll eat all the grass and take away food from other animals. So then too many rabbits, that makes it so all you have in the environment is rabbits. And then eventually the rabbits will start to die because then they won't have as much food available because they'll start competing for their own grass. Too many humans is also bad because we as like a species, take lots of land, lots of food, and lots of water from other animals. That's what we did to molly mammoths. That's what we did to dodo birds. That's what we're doing to rhinos and elephants. A lot of big animals are dying because of humans, because we take so much. So that's why limiting factors are good. It's because it stops overpopulation. So that's what I expected you to answer right here. The next word I want you to know is exponential growth. So that's rapid population increase due to an abundance of resources. And it's, it's a rapid increase, and it doesn't have a carrying capacity here. There's no limit reached yet in exponential growth because there are no or limited predators. There's nothing really killing them. So you'll just grow, grow, grow. That's exponential growth. Humans are exponentially growing right now. We have not hit our carrying capacity yet. It's estimated humans will reach it at 12 billion people. So please write down exponential growth is a rapid increase in population without a limit. And then to get the picture, go to image, search the web, and then look up exponential growth. And then insert the picture there on the right side. Next one, we have logistic growth. So this is the other type of growth. So this will be a population facing limited resources. So this is where a population does hit a limit and then it'll flatten out They'll flatten out. Most animals besides humans will grow logistically and eventually hit their limit. So that's logistic growth. So in your notes, right, logistic growth is a population growing, then flattening out at carrying capacity. And then to get an image, go to insert image, search the web, and then type in logistic growth. And then I'll do curves since it's popping up. I kind of want like a visual. And then I pick this picture, it looks really good, and then you insert it. Okay, so that's for the notes for today. Then we did a Kahoot, quizzing you on carrying capacity, limiting factors, and then how to find carrying capacity. Okay, when you're ready, that was all for the notes. Go to the Keen Limiting Factors Worksheet. This is what I want you to do. I want you to read through the worksheet. It'll explain the difference between exponential and logistic growth. And then it'll explain. So here's an important thing. If you see a bunch of these peaks and valleys, the carrying capacity is in between. Okay? Okay. Once you finish, stop at this point. Stop on graph three. And then at the end of the day, take the attendance survey.
The tensor fluid looks like this. That's the last thing you have to do. 